Chris Chamberlain of Minnesota, tell us your story. It began, you know, beginning stages of my career, family first life. They kind of hook you. They go, hey, we've got this opportunity. That you can make $200,000 a month in income. I'm like, what? Now, me being on disability at the time, trying to get off disability and provide my family a real life, they provide these numbers. They provide this data. It's got to all be simulated. In hindsight, I should have ran, but I ran with, got registered, started getting the appointments, which took quite a while. And then they're like, hey, hey, you got to get some information. Uh, you need lists. Hey, buy this list, buy that list, buy this list. And they sell you hopes and dreams. What they leave you with is empty. You have no real support. And then you start contacting people. Half the people are either dead or the wrong numbers. When you do finally get through and you sit and chat, you get prepared to sell a policy and they're like, no, 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 no. You get no's. So you're left after investing all this money into leads and trying to do the best job you can with almost zero coaching, true coaching, nobody to show you the walkthrough on actually doing the applications. Then you find out hindsight that, hey, that policy got sold by someone else because you were just the begin marketer and they had a closer come in behind you and take over and do whatever they want. Now, I've heard of so many other people who have worked for Family First Life getting buried by chargebacks. I'm fortunate enough that I did not get that deep into Family First Life. I started recognizing the problems after investing some funds and noticing some algorithms, as it were, that just didn't play into the reality of business. And I walk and I have run into Family First Life integrity in many different aspects of this business. It's just not cool. You got to be heads up. You got to watch out. Don't get sold on baloney dreams. If you look at any other captive agencies, they have, you get a base pay salary around the 30,000. Uh, State Farm and some of the other insurance agencies, you're looking at 30, 33, maybe 40, and then you get some commission on top of that. It'll bring you up a little bit, but you're not going to be making millions of dollars a year. Don't let these people play you. That's a game. They are playing you. They want to take your money in two ways. Number one, they want to resell the contract that you close. Number two, they want to sell you leads that they exclusively have for you, but yet the main lead provider owns them and owns a few other companies. And I just said hi to one of them today and asked, hey, how's my former upline doing? And it kind of shocked them because I was lied to on another company now that I was part of. And they looked at me and they're like, oh, we have nothing to do with Family First Life. And then today I look and lo and behold, one of the uh, owner or head cohorts, president of Integrity that owns Family First Life is sitting right in front of me on the Zoom meeting, heading up this insurance industry. Uh, they call it daily coaching call. Uh, Chris, it's there's nothing to hold back on. I did mention to the laws of defamation based on the Amber Heard, Johnny Depp trial. We know that in order, there, you have nothing to be afraid of on this very public call that will end up on YouTube. You would have to be malicious, lying, and know you're lying to be in any sort of liability. Right. My investigations are clear that Family First Life and their partners, they're now being investigated by the state of Florida Department of Fraud for a first degree felony, which was brought to light on the last interview I did with Jamel of Jacksonville. So what you just described to us, Chris, in a very nonchalant manner that you're being used as a fronter, that's a I'm major like, fraud. That's a major fraud. That, According to the state of Florida law, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have similar laws in all 50 states. If you defraud 20 people, 20, two zero people, that's that's, that's a first degree felony, 30 years in jail. You have you thousands are. here. You, nationally, thousands. Family First Life and Integrity Lead Marketing and their affiliates and subsidiaries have thousands of people that they're screwing over. Let's just be honest. They are taking them for everything they have, giving them false hopes, false dreams, and leaving them with an empty plate. You don't get the training. You don't get the coaching, actual coaching. They give you this, oh, we're going to do a call here. We're going to do a, a Zoom meeting. Oh, my goodness. Let's pipe up everyone. Oh, this is our top producer. But then when you're not the top producer and you're like, hey, I really need the help, they walk away and go, well, hey, once you get going and you get 150 sits and a thousand applications in a month or whatever, then you're going to pee on the money chair. Yeah. And we're going to coach you even further. 
to make you really successful at screwing people. Um, sorry, I don't like screwing people. I don't like the aspect of her. I have to people. mention, Chris, what Jamel of Jacksonville told me that the new agent comes in, makes a sale or two, then those sales get replaced. That's major fraud. That's yeah. the laws of Churning. churning, the laws of fraud, white collar crime. The, that's 30 years in jail. That's Bernie Madoff ask. Bernie ripped off rich people. Sam Bankman freed ripped off investors who wanted to put money into Bitcoin, which is the perfect currency for kidnappers. Imagine ripping off a bunch of people who wanted to put money in a kidnapping currency. Right. Uh, Sean Mikey of Family First Life is ripping off young, uneducated, poor people. That's pretty much just it. New people, not just uneducated. They have just started their career. They're not knowledgeable. Right, and that's a little bit, uh, when I say uneducated, yeah. uneducated, I'm really, yeah, that's a little bit harsh for me to be so negative on people who got ripped off. But remember, before this YouTube channel was too light, uh, less than 12 months ago, there was nothing online that you could find anything. The internet and social media were a happy place for family first life. There were only positive reviews. I do know that they have a team of posters who post positive stuff. These are paid people that post positive stuff, but it is effective. They have sent, I would say, between 500 and 1,000 fake lawsuit threats to various people who've posted negative stuff online. The average person really doesn't care that much. As soon as he gets that lawsuit threat via email, most of them just delete whatever they posted. But I have to tell you, this is a, a well-heeled criminal organization. Rico. And the, the exact law I'll paste across the bottom of this, I believe it's called the White Collar Criminal Crime Prevention Act or something to that effect in the state of Florida. In Minnesota, it'll be called something else. There's also a federal law on this, but the federal law won't be as strict as the various state laws. Right. The reason other companies have not done what they've done because no one wants to go to jail for 30 years for going to work. These people, they don't give to poos. They want to nail you. They want to use you because at the end of it, with a little contract that you sign, it appears that you have no rights. You have indemnified them of wrongdoing and you take full responsibility via the chargeback, via the different override systems they have and via their arbitrating rules. You pr pretty much sign away your future and you're the one left holding the bag. They do it in such a way that when you contract with them, you're responsible for everything, which means you as an agent, your license is on the line, not their Heineken. They've gotten smart. They're not going to put themselves in that situation where they're going to be the ones liable because they keep you uninformed. They don't truly tell you the law. The problem here is you have to know the law. When you get your insurance license, there's an ethics course you have to take. There is anti-money laundering course that you have to take. And they expect that you are going to be 100% knowledgeable in your field. That's why you you pass a test. The state issues you your license. The National Producer Database issues you a number. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners says, all right, you're good to go. And then you find a company and you go to work. This company has built their contract and their repertoire. So you think they're this massive, beautiful money-making machine that's going to help me take care of my family and end my poverty. You ended up basically at the end of the day, more frustrated, sometimes de highly depressed. I know that there are a few agents out there and I'm not going to mention their names. They, if they want to talk, they can talk, but some agents have compl uh, compl excuse me, contemplated suicide, suicide, uh, taking their own life because of the financial. The I, 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 Chris, the Chris, I believe you. I am I don't want to say I'm contemplating ending my life, but I'm getting phone calls every day for the last year. One after another, people telling me they went into this business broke. You know, broke, no money, no nothing. And you end up a little bit more broke two, three, four months later. And I have to believe this, this is causing tremendous harm, whoever this is affecting to. I would not be surprised if one person just said, hey, it's too embarrassing to tell my family and friends what happened. They just drive off the cliff. When you share that exciting news when you first get contracted, you tell your family, this Christmas is going to be amazing. And then you get to Christmas and you're like, um, we've had some problems. I promise you, I'm still going to keep at it. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to keep going. Next Christmas will be better. And then when next Christmas comes around, you look 
at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I can't support my family. What is the point of this? Why do I even exist? It's extreme pain. It's anxiety, depression. Those all come with a, a very, very, very powerful words to describe what you feel inside when they commit you to failure. And that's what it is. It's a way to commit you to fail you and leave you more than just a little bit more broke, a lot more broke. I was trying to be nice a little bit more broke, but remember, if, if a person's in their 20s, 30s, or 40s, or 50s, and generally people who become insurance agents or switching careers are not in a good situation financially from the get-go. and Yeah, they'll tell you to stop paying your rent and buy the leads. They'll tell you to stop paying your student loan, buy the leads. Don't pay your car payment. Buy the leads. You'll make the money off the leads. The leads are bullshit. Excuse my language. The, the leads are fraud. It's complete and utter nonsense fraud. I did call the person who Andrew, founder of Family First Life USA, integrity marketing partner. His name was mentioned a few times. A few people told me he buys leads that Family First Life CRM leads come from Leadco. I call Leadco. I discovered that a exclusive filled out postcard for mortgage protection is $100. That's what it is. It's $100. Andrew from Family First Life will go to Leadco. These 90-day leads, he will buy all of them. And that's what he's been putting in the CRM for the last 10 years. The number of leads that are coming in on a monthly basis is minuscule. So the vast majority of leads that are in that CRM are really five, six, 10 year old leads coming. It's called rewash. It's they remarket data. the same leads, aged data, one buyer, aged dads, four buyer, aged data, 10 buyers. Uh, hey, this one's been around. I have leads. One guy was dead. You know, multiple people were dead. Okay, how can you sell to a dead guy? Hey, dead guy, I got some, I got a policy for you. It'll cover you. Uh, yeah, no, he's not going to buy. When you call, this is blah, 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 blah. I need to speak with blah, blah, blah. I am a licensed insurance producer in the state of Minnesota. I'd like to uh, help you with your final expense or your mortgage protection, whatever script they have you running. And then you get the, he's been dead for 10 years or he's he just died about eight months ago. And you feel kind of like, oh, crap. And you apologize and you just end up bringing up bad news. One lady was on the phone crying with me because it brought up her individual had uh, committed suicide. Person after person has been telling me that they're promised exclusive leads. One they're after not another. They're and not exclusive. They're finally they're all company. Finally, I went on Zip Recruiter. I punched in my name. I spoke to three, four, or five different recruiters. One of them I put online because it, to me it was the most interesting one. This woman was adamant that they had an unlimited supply of exclusive leads for eleven dollars. I call her Brittany the Fraudster. You will see the link to that video right above. They're really getting people. The Italians got it for the RICO Act, and that's corruption racketeering, correct? And I'd say that this is corruption and racketeering because they're targeting specific areas. They're targeting specific criteria, and they're getting people's hopes and dreams up. They're selling them garbage. Then they're selling them more garbage with their leads. They're burying them in financial hardship. If you go against them, they come at you. Hey, you got to do this. Hey, you got to do that. Oh, we're going to pull your license. Oh, we're going to pull your appointment with this company. It's just a bunch of hogwash. It's not real. Don't play with them. If I can give anybody advice on the internet, please listen to this. I pray to God that you listen to this. You see someone from FFL, Family First Life, approach you, promising you a dream. Research them. Type in FFL violations on the internet. Type in Family First Life history. Find out what companies they're attributed to. Chris, let me jump Don't in. Don't believe the uh, hype. Before I uploaded these YouTube videos, there was nothing negative on Family First Life. If you harken back one, two, or three years ago, there were a lot of middle-aged, middle-class type people that lost 10, 20, 30,000 dollars in their fraud because there was nothing you could find online. The key yeah, you got the to 2021, December 27th, 2021, a cease and desist letter to Family First Life from the Federal Trade Commission. That's when everything starts popping off. And that's when I started making videos after yep. that based on the various lawsuits. They also got a class action lawsuit. They've been lawsuited for violating the do not call list for $552,000, as well as Nine insurance agents got sued as well. I believe six or seven or eight of them bought leads from FFL. They're now being dragged into federal court. So you have to 
be a village idiot to buy leads from FFL. There's a distinct possibility you will be dragged into federal court being asked to pay $552,000 lawsuit, as well as all the legal expenses that ensue from that. What we're trying to do, uh, Chris, I need to get the state attorney generals involved, law enforcement, insurance, fraud departments involved. This is a relatively easy case. The law in the state of Florida, if you defraud 20 or more people, you're looking at a first degree felony. The investigator in Florida said, hey, have you contacted the feds? And I'm saying, like, this is an easy case. You could shut them down, just this one investigator. There's no shortage of 20 people in the state of Florida. There's no shortage of 20 people in North Carolina, South Carolina, Minnesota, probably 48 of the 50 states. They've defrauded at least 20 people. Most states have similar laws. It could be in Alaska. They, they're they not as popular as Maybe they maybe that's the only place they haven't defrauded twenty people. But the other states, it's there's well they're well over twenty people. Right. I'm I'm just uh, I was peeking on Justia Dockets or Justice Dockets to see if I could pull up integrity and pull up family first life. Nothing's filed. There's not a lot of lawsuits against these companies except the ones I've mentioned. Family first guy got a class action lawsuit uh, for spamming insurance agents via SMS. But there's just not a lot. I do know that there, there's a gentleman named Kevin of California who got referred to sue by his state attorney general. I spoke to him a couple of days ago. He will be filing that lawsuit in the next week or two. I, I've, I've said on the uh, on these video podcasts that last month and two months ago that he's going to be filing in a week or two. And I'm Finally, I called him up and say, Kevin, what's happening? Why haven't you filed? He went to the government, aid, the state of California government agency, EEOC, something about discrimination. And he consulted with those people and those people gave their input and they upped it to the federal government, the EEOC department. And he, it's, it's all ready to be filed. Good. And this gentleman is expecting to get, he tells me, over $1 million in damages. Family First Life grabbed his downline. He was earning between ten and $15,000 a month from his downline, and they just grabbed it. Yeah, they'll As take your overrides. As a retaliatory overrides. measure based on complaining about something that was racially insensitive. Right. That's called the book of business swipe. They love your book of business. That's their biggest thing. It's, there's a couple of other agencies that love it too, and they claim that, hey, if if you want to retire, we'll give you an offer better than you've ever received, at least 10 to 15% more for your book of business. And it's it's hogwash. It doesn't work that way. Chris, let me get your uh, specific situation. You seem to know a lot about this business. All How right. long were you with Family First Life? I got out quick. I got to be blunt. I got out quick. I kept going and going and going. And within a year, I have you like, know, no, 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 no. I can't do this anymore. And the depression got so bad. I was like, you know what? Telling my wife that she needs to find someone else because I can't take care of our family because I seem to be a failure at what I'm trying to do. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why is this not working? It seems to be working for everybody else in the company. They have all these successful people getting watches and cars. Why am I not up on that list? Why am I not able to close these things? Why am I, you know, I'm following their teachings. I'm using their quoting tools. I'm using everything I can. Why am I not making a single close? Why am I not getting the recruits? Oh, that's because anybody I suggested for a recruit, they put under somebody else. Anybody I make contact, they transfer that contact over to someone else who undercuts what I was quoted or told to quote so that they could close the business. Chris, so let's get this into numbers. You worked with Family First Life for, let's say, one year. Yep. And in that year, probably about 15,000 contacts. How much money did you spend on leads? I don't have a running figure. Uh, Ballpark, (laughs) 1,000, 10,000, 20,000. Under 10,000. Over one. I've spoken to a few people. They say it's 5,000. Then when they really check the numbers, it's closer to 9,000. It, it's usually more than what people, because people are embarrassed of what happened. But I borrowed money from my mother-in-law. I, I used stimulus money when it came out. No, the whole works. It was not a pretty sight. I have to tell you, you really had no chance. It right. wasn't you personally. You may go into another organization, make one, 200,000, a million dollars a year. The family first life situation that you went into, you had no chance and you are not alone. The YouTube videos that they're parading, a huge percentage of them that they took down after the FTC cease and desist were complete hogwash, complete lies. You know, I'm an actor, right? They were actors. 
No, I'm essence. an actor too. I'm listed in IMDb. I should have, when I watched the videos, I should have seen the quality of production. It's studio production video. They have literally mastered the art of making a movie in 60 second videos, half hour video, full movies. They got scripts, they got show off, they have the whole lineup. You have actors that are in there that are part of the family first life. You watch them hand a car, probably not a real gift, a watch, a plane. They have this plane and it's like, are you serious? Okay, we're jet setters, we're going to this place. And you look around and yeah, that's all the people I'm supposed to be working with. You come to realize, hold up. It's all company people. I don't see any serving staff. I don't see any hotel staff. I don't see a pilot. Is this really their jet? I don't see him get in the car and drive away. Is that a real Rolex? <laughs> it looks like studio there, there, prop. There is a video that I put on my playlist, Family First Life Class Action Lawsuit Witnesses. The very bottom one was done by a professional video maker named James Janney. If you look at that 27-minute video, you realize that there's a playbook of MLM cult fraud, and they are going to a T by that playbook. I think they modified it a little bit so it's more convincing because you can't. They did a good job. They, they, these people are provided. This is the like I'm trying to learn how to make videos these past quite a few months. And this <laughs> is a hard profession to get proficient at making videos is hard. Right. I realize in this in any industry, if you're going to succeed, you have to be good at it. You have to do stuff well. And the most influential way to convince people in a mass market way is video so look at facebook almost every ad out there you see hey I, blah, 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 i've got this 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 you, let me show you why i put this on the lamborghini oh okay guy apparently owns lamborghini that's cool whoa i can get there and a family first life took it one step further we've got a jet we're giving a lamborghini we're giving a rolls or a, or a rolex we're giving we're giving look at this and we believe in god first they pray, they do all this stuff with you. Okay, do unto others as you would want done to you. They did partner with a pastor who owns yes. a big church. I suppose that's from the playbook. Well, if you can, power of influencing people, trigger someone's emotions. If you can trigger their emotions and get them understanding and identifying with what you're feeling, you can control the conversation. That's what they teach. Kill a person four times in an insurance presentation. It influences their emotions to that negative. And then you tell them, hey, I'm not going to kill you anymore. Now let's, let's protect you. That's their playbook. That's what they want you to do. And then they're like, oh, 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 sound like the hero by saying, we're only going to look at 17% of your disposable income. We're going to run on the principle of 72. 72 times your interest rate tells you how long for your money to double. They teach you all these little principles, have you read these little books, and try and build you in this monstrosity of lying sales. The 17% is a good idea. I, I'll give them that. But they don't do that. They break their own rules when you're sitting down. Uh, just go a little over. Go up to 25%. They, they'll, they'll cover it. Go to 50. You're fine. You're fine. And okay, you want me to quote above what you've taught me to quote. And that's their plan. They want you to get the decline so they can take and get the approval at a later date with one of their insight. It's an wow. inside game. Uh, Chris, you just told me something I did not know about. So they're specifically telling you to give you bad advice so your client gets rejected so the manager could sell your policy when you're no longer with the company or even with the company. There, that's, that's pretty much it. It's a stack game. Like I said, they'll stack you, the cards way against you, and then they'll pull those cards and reapply in their own fashion so they can get that sale, building their own upline to be powerful. I could never really figure out why these recruiters were recruiting until I heard the Jamel of Jacksonville interview where they're <coughs> replacing the new agent's policies. Right. But I guess there's many methods to rip off the people who you recruited. And you've just right. mentioned a method which I didn't think about. That's just it. They ask you, hey, you want to build your upline, build your upline or downline, build them, build them, build them. You get overrides. You get overrides. Come on, come on, do it. And then they're like, mm -hmm, this one, I'm going to take that one, that one, and that one. I'll give you a little bit better percentage. He's only giving you, you only get this much. If you get this, you can recruit then you're going to get overrides. Okay. The thing is, if you're getting overrides, they do trickle. It's the insurance business. 
you get an override from people that you support and train. That's how it works. The difference between an agent and an MGA, managing general agent. As you build up your business, you get agency title and things like that. And then the people who work under you, you get commission overrides. If they kept it in the legal realm, it would be fine, but they don't do that. They want to pull it and so they can have a bigger override percentage. Basically, they want to build their business larger and keep yours smaller. Kevin from California, when he complained to the attorney general, they sent over that complaint to the Department of Labor. And they've got a law in California where if you steal from independent contractors, it's the equivalent of wage theft. Stealing- right wages. Other states may have a similar type law. And if you steal someone's downline or their efforts of recruiting, you put it in your pocket. That's, that's what I was noticing that, whenever I'd go and reach time. out to someone. But, well, whenever I'd reach out to somebody and get them interested in doing it, I'd notice, hey, they're a part of the company. Why are they not under my... Why are they not in my... It's nice to tell me about this on YouTube, but ideally you should be telling your attorney general about this and the attorney general will direct you to the law that they're breaking. The reason we're publicizing on this YouTube is it causes people to contact me. And I'm making a list of various people in your state and other states that are defrauded. So if you were ever to file a legal action, hopefully after the referral from the Attorney General of the state of Minnesota, I could easily supply you 5, 10, 20 witnesses. Chris, do yourself a favor, do the people of Minnesota a favor. Whatever you're telling me, put in writing, send it over to the state attorney general, CC it to the Department of Insurance. Anything that's unethical in a business sense is most likely illegal. The Department of, Ins- of Insurance of your state, they're most concerned about churning. The story right. about people make sales, then the managers replace them a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a year later. That's what they're concerned about. You got very strict laws. You rip off 20 people in the state of Florida that you're looking at 30 years in jail. Here's the funny thing. When I first started with Family First Life, I was under one person. Then they moved me under Kyle. I'm like, what's going on? It's an upline change. I'm like, upline change? How could an upline change unless somebody died or left the organization? If so, why did they leave? Oh, no, 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 no. They moved over to a different line. Oh, okay. Find out they're no longer in the company. They're they're nowhere to be seen. And that's, you know, what began the downfall of Family First Life in my thing. I'm like, "Eh, what's going on? And then, hey, buy this. Hey, approach your family. Hey, do this, do that, do that, do that. The approach your family, that's any insurance person. If you go to work at any of them, Chubbs, State Farm, you know, farmers, they're going to say, hey, write your first policy should be yourself. Quote your own. You can cover your own policy. Get it written. And then approach your family. Help them out. Work with them. They trust you. They can be your first few policies written, and you'll learn from that. Now, FFL, they really try to keep you away from your family so much. They want you to write you. They want you to write your first relatives don't go too far down the line and i think i know why the older generations that you get to they get a little bit more skeptical they've been dealing with insurance for many more years than you have the main policy that they're pushing is a company called america which is hugely overpriced so if you end up speaking to too many of these family members someone's gonna say something america is one of the big national producers for that that stuff you get your license you get you gotta fight through to get this this hoop and that hoop they denied me i'm actually kind of happy they did because looking at the hindsight maybe they did me a favor maybe you know maybe any of the policies that i could have quoted might have been used on uh, americo and then i'd end up with a massive chargeback as soon as the people say i'm getting screwed i want to get a different policy so Okay, I make one year. They stick with the policy for one year. I get my commissions. I keep that. How morally wrong would you feel when you find out that Americo is not exactly doing the client's justice? And I'm not saying anything about Americo being an unethical company, but their partnership with Family First Life, that's a pretty bad deal. The price policy, that's what they quote. That's what they do. And Family First Life knows that they're doing that and they're higher and they're setting up their agents for failure in chargeback. Chris, how much sales did you make during this one-year period? I got none. I got zero. Zilch. Not a dime. You made no sales after spending $7,000 of leads? After spending a lot of money on leads, I made no sale. And the reason they kept saying is, oh, because you're not contracted with America. You need to be contracted with America. So you spent, again, the, the, so you spent s- multiple hours, multiple months making phone calls, 
multiple months going on appointments and you made no sales. None. There was a gentleman named Robert Taylor, a man in his <laughs> late seventies who tells me he, he spent $10,000 on leads. Similar story, no sales, right there in Minnesota. This man complained to the Department of Insurance. At that point, I did not know that you were supposed to complain to the Attorney General. Right. But what I would like you to do, Chris, is to get reimbursed for the hardship. And the way you're going to get reimbursed from the hardship, it's not through me. It's not right. through Mr. YouTube. It's going to be through the court system. Before you file any sort of court paperwork, you want to get the attorney general involved. Right. So let's do a well-written letter to the attorney general. Wait a couple of weeks, see if Mr. Ellison, the gentleman who's, who's that famous attorney general, if he actually cares about the people of Minnesota, and I can tell you right off the bat, this description does not fit you, but the but from what I hear, a huge disproportionate number of people who get ripped off by Family First Life are more of the black African American population. And I know Mr. Keith Ellison, that's close to his heart. So hopefully he'll take action on that. At a simple issue, give you a referral to Sue. If you wait a couple of weeks, if you don't get that referral to Sue, you still have the right, as you know, to file something in the local state courthouse, in the county courthouse. That will cause Mr. Sean Mikey and whoever else influenced you to fork over $7,000 and a year of your life into this endeavor, which was based on fraud. When you walked into their system, they told you it was exclusive leads. And they weren't exclusive leads. I know that. That that was right. a big joke. And Sean Mikey could explain to the judge why he told you they were exclusive leads when they weren't. And I will I give you the information of Mr. Robert Taylor. He's in the, the big city of Metro. Metro. Right He's in the, the metro area. The laws I know in federal court, if they're within 100 miles, they get a subpoena. They have to show up. Robert will show up. There's another woman who's severely pissed off, which is a little bit in the country. <laughs> But I suppose if you're nice to her, she'll show up as well. I just remember her. I believe her name. I've, I've got it all written here. So I'll, I'll go through the list. I'll, I'll get and, and of course, uh, based on the laws of discovery, it's not hard to find these people. Virtually everyone who came into their system over the last three, four years has a similar type story. It may even be public information. In, in many states, it is public information. You don't even have to ask Family First Life Art. People who got contracted with Americo are primarily family first life agents. Right. And if you interview these people one by one, they're all going to tell you the same story. This whole issue that you believe during this one year period that you were different, that you were lacking, that everyone's making money except you was a bunch of hogwash. If you knew the truth, you wouldn't have wasted $7,000 in one year of your life. That's a uh, scam. That's a white collar crime. It is a scam. It is a fraud. Think about the time, uh, time and effort, time and expense. Look at that. Not just putting the money out there but they're taking advantage of people's time and expenses you have to make the trip you have to make the phone call you have to do the text you have to be away from your family you have to be away from other possibilities to provide for your family put your nose to the grind get those numbers rolling do it do it do it and it's just baloney you're given a batch of crap leads that right. you paid a okay. premium uh, for chris let me ask you when did you figure out that these are uh, okay, I know your answer. You're going to say, hey, I sort of had a feeling right from the get-go that they were there crap leads, but I I was pushed to go forward and continue buying these leads and continue endeavoring because I thought everyone's making money. That right. mo when you got an investment of that magnitude, you go through it, and you continue to go through it, hoping that somebody will bite. No bites. Three quarters of the way through the list, I stop. At a certain point, you must have known that they're lying to you about the exclusive lead. Yep. And I stopped contacting them. I pulled my plug. I called my insurance department and say, remove any appointment that Family First Life has me affiliated with them on. Get me off of their roster. And I went to another site and it said, you're registered with Family First Life. I'm like, uh, excuse me? Pull me from their roster now. And I do have an email that was even recent from Family First Life. And that one, I told them, pull me from their roster now. That one well, is dated. There's another gentleman off the top of my head who's also on my YouTube playlist named George Colozo from Wisconsin. He, eleven dollars or $12,000 of leads, made a few sales. Ouch. <laughs> there could be something in your part of the country where there's just not a lot of exclusive leads or even you know, fairly recent leads, 
where you have a fighting chance. So they're really just feeding you phone book data. Family first, life, lead support. Thank you for clarifying you've been removed from our system. That was on 11 18 of 22. I stopped several years ago and on Friday, November 18th, I sent them an email. Family first life. I am no longer with them. Remove me now. And they remove me from the roster. Come to find out, oh, that's integrity. Oh, wow. You mentioned to me before this phone call that you're with another marketing company called National Agents Alliance. Yep, they're with integrity. You realize it's a similar type of operation to bring in new agents, sell them leads and laugh at them afterwards. Uh, There's one nice part about this one. My upline paid for, paid like 300 bucks and got me some startup leads. You need some cash in your pocket. You need to get going. I'll buy your leads. That's how it starts with them. We're going to show you the charity. We're going to show you that, you know, we're going to give you a hand here. Those leads are just as bad because they're coming from integrity. Chris, that leads that are exclusive, that are worthwhile are a hundred dollars. Your job as a licensed insurance agent is to do the bullet point of being an expert at getting in front of people, which means lead generation. So depending on a third party, which is a high tech company, which has a huge database of gullible insurance agents is not a good idea. If you're not planning on doing this job properly, it's probably not a good idea to be in this profession. And part of the profession is to be good at getting in front of people, being in control of that, that you're depending on integrity, marketing, national agents, alliance, or family first life for that part of the business ain't a good idea. Uh, You know that now because you're one year into it. I apologize that I, I didn't speak to you before you got suckered into that system. It sucks. It's a learning experience. Never let your de- past dictate your future. Let it define your future. There's always time to stop the negativity and things that you have going on. And there's always times to pivot and shift. Basketball players do it, okay? Think like you're on a basketball court. You're dribbling towards that net and you get a wall. You pivot, shift, roll around the wall, make your score. We got to learn to pivot and shift. NAA and Integrity and Family First Life, they're not the only companies out there. I am trying now to get on as a captive agent at a actual company so that I know I have the base pay and I have the opportunity to advance and grow and build my own agency in a legal fashion. Chris, what I'd like you to do tomorrow morning or later today, get this well-written letter to your attorney general, CC it to the Department of Insurance. I could definitely help you, but I need you to make the first step, which is make that letter to the attorney general. Wait a couple of weeks. You'll see what they have to say. I will put you in contact with these various witnesses that are within 100 miles from your house. You can file something in the state courthouse by yourself if you've got a decent education of reading and reading comprehension. It's really not that hard, but I suppose you'll show a local attorney, this playlist, and he's going to realize that this is a cut and dry case. A This is a slam dunk. You may find some guy will take it on a 30%. You'll get the $7,000 back on leads. You'll get the one year of your life. The average salary in Minnesota and many other places is $5,000 a month. We're talking $60,000. The emotional damages have no limit. I, you also have triple damages. So you're talking 60,000, 10,000 for the leads up to 70, triple that you're up to 210. You throw in the emotional damages. You may be up to a half a million dollars, especially since I have a list of people who became victims in Minnesota. It makes this a slam dunk. So shock it around to the various attorneys. They'll look at this playlist, which you'll be included on. Right now, there's 45 videos. With you, there'll be 40 sec. The judge will decide how much your emotional damages are worth. If you come back with a judgment of a half million dollars, I would not be surprised. But something has to be filed in a courthouse. Sean Mikey will be flying to Minnesota to explain his story. I was told he is a private jet. Are you aware of that? Oh, yeah. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure he does. Uh, that's probably what they use in their commercial. They do that commercial. St- in fact, NAA also has a private jet, National Agents Alliance. If you could get the tail number off of his jet i could pull up national agents alliance that they advertise it let's get these people throwing their private jets to an airport in minnesota try to get this trial happen 
in winter. I want to see a December trial. Usually these things take one year. So if you file tomorrow morning, it'll be a winter trial. ASAP, it'll still give you the opportunity to file rather quickly because we Great. definitely it'll want- Great, it'll be cold. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we want Sean Mikey to be flying his private jet to testify before the court in winter of 2023. You know, I'm hoping in 2025, he's in front of a federal grand jury. If the people that I spoke to who are part of the Florida investigative fraud department, and they could very easily put him in jail. Remember, there's a gentleman named Michael Avenetti that was all over the TV just a couple of years ago. He just got sentenced for 14 years in jail. Yep. I saw that. 14 years. Uh, fraud is real. The law in the state of Florida is you rip off 20 people, you're serving up to 30 years in jail, first degree felony. Minnesota has similar laws. <laughs> Probably four or five people in Minnesota that I've spoken to. If the law is similar to Florida, it means we just got to get 15 more. Right. And they do exist. It's not hard to find, especially since virtually every person who got defrauded was contracted with America Insurance Company. That is public information. Yep. Okay, Chris, I do appreciate you coming on this YouTube. You're helping people in a way that you don't even realize. I hope that this actually helps change and open some minds up to the reality that there are huge problems. Investigate, investigate, investigate. Find out who you're really dealing with. Trace ownership. Every organization has canned out people. Stand out. You know, they stand out in the crowd. Investigate. Look for similarities and then look for connections. Before you start getting into it, don't fall like I did. Look for the connections. Let me just mention the, the, key, the keys to selling insurance. You become an expert at product. You become an expert at getting in front of people. You become an expert at being known as a professional person, which are three bullet points. You become pretty good at closing. You don't have to be an expert at closing because you will get better as the time goes on. But you have to be an expert on those three bullet points that I mentioned. If you're not on that level where you're an expert, you shouldn't be spending any money. You should be endeavoring just to be expert on those three bullet points, expert on product, expert on getting in front of people, expert at coming across as a professional person. That's it. If anyone has a desire to make money in the financial sales business, that's it. You don't have to spend money on seminars, on books, on mentors. I've sort of noticed when someone says, I'm willing to be a mentor to you, it really means he, he wants to rip you off. Give me the money. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you something. <laughs> they want to rip you off. So stay away from these mentors. Realize what this business really is. I have a six day per week video conference call, Monday to Thursday, 12 noon, Saturday, Sunday, two o'clock in the afternoon. Now I'll tell you straight out, my company does not need much. We are for this website system. We want people to put the website on their own domain name, which is $14 a year to come across as a professional person. We say it's a free website, but you know, people have to pay their bills somehow. We put advertisements on these websites to get rid of the ads. It's $12 a month. If someone is helping my company pay their bills with $12 a month, I will walk you through specifically what you should do to make money in this business. You probably know this, Chris. I have spoken to tens of thousands of insurance agent, not hundreds, not thousands. It's pro it's, it's over 10,000. I know who's making money. I know the techniques that make money and I just want $12. That's all in it. Uh, you know, the generic stuff, which I mentioned now is generic, but I would get a little bit more specific of what company to apply for, what company to sell. If you do come across as a professional person, the companies will give you their highest commission level. And you know, when family first life is saying, Hey, we start you off at hundred and we move you up to 145. You already know you're not at the the highest commission level because th there's another 45 points that hypothetically you could move up to. So you already know it's not a good deal. And new insurance agents have a tendency to get ripped off. So the story that you told me about spending $7,000 on leads and making no sales is not unusual. I do want these people prosecuted. I don't want a grand jury. I want a trial and a conviction. And the way we're going to do this is by having people file to their state attorney general, let the governmental authorities know what's going on. And that's why these videos are important. I would like anyone who's seeing this to encourage the YouTube algorithm to move up this video by giving a like, make a comment. I answer every comment that's written at the bottom of this video. So please ask me any question. You could even say the word hello. 
and I will respond. Get that letter written. Maybe we'll do a shorter video the next time and you'll just tell us what you wrote and you'll right. see what the response is. When you go to the county courthouse, if you're good at video, take your trust iPhone, start recording yourself, posting, filing something with the court of clerk because none of this stuff is that difficult. The difficulty will be on the part of Sean Mike, Sean Mikey, where he will have to take his private jet to Minnesota in the middle of December. That will be hard. Nothing you would be doing to cause him to go there is that hard. And explain to the judge what happened. Exactly. And that's really where it is. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you walk away with a half a million dollars. You're probably going to, hey, I'll, I'll pay you this to shut you up. <laughs> His attorney fees will be probably closer to 200. It won't be 100,000. It'll be closer to 200,000. Right. So what did that mean? You would think in a logical world, he would just give you the 200,000 or the plus an extra 100 for your time and effort since he will lose a trial. Right. Eventuality is enough people hit him and the house of cards fall. I'm not that excited about you getting a half a million dollars, even though you seem like a nice guy. It would it, you know, it's good that you get a half million dollars, but I would want the attorney generals and the, the, the criminal investigators to get involved to put this gentleman in jail. Bring the house but of it, cards down. But it, it'll go hand in hand. Exactly. Chris, I it's, do appreciate you coming. Do you have a closing statement? Run from family first life. Run from anything to do with integrity lead center. Run, run, run. Don't fall victim. Use your head. You're bright. You've made it through insurance school. You got your license. There's so many other opportunities out there. Don't fall for the hype of hopes and dreams. Because in reality, look at what people really make. Look up the average insurance salesman's yearly salary and target yourself somewhere around there.